Every Home Assistant user needs to master scripts. They can massively save your time and simplify your automations. I'm not only gonna give you the code in this video, but I'm also gonna show you step-by-step -step of how to actually adapt it for your own needs. Stick to the end of the video because I'm gonna give you a cool YAML coding tutorial. I'm gonna show you how you can fade lights and how you can build this script yourself. This video is possible thanks to the awesome subscribers that have actually voted for this video in the recent survey that I made on my channel. To participate in the next survey, you just need to subscribe to the channel. Now, let's roll the intro. A script is a series of actions. All of the actions that you can do on an automation, you can recreate them in a script. If you go to your configuration and click on scripts, you can see the list of all of your scripts. You can add a script through the UI. You can also go to scripts.yaml and code it directly from there. The first script I'm gonna show you today is the notify all. The reason why you actually need this script is that every time you wanna notify a device and you wanna notify a second device or a third device, you need to do that and it's a repetitive action in each of your automations. What you can do is you can save time and use just one script. Let me show you how you can build it. Now I'm gonna go into the YAML mode because it's gonna be a lot easier for you to see and that's what you're gonna be copying and pasting. So copy all of the YAML code, paste it into your scripts.yaml and we let's change a few things. Under the sequence, there are three things that are happening in this block of code. You can see them from line 10 to line 13 to 14 to 17 and 18 to 21. So I have three devices that I'm notifying and each device will be notified with the same title and the same message. Title and message are defined here as fields, so you, you can think them as like variables. Now if you have more than three devices, do the following. Highlight from line 18 to line 21, copy, paste, and over here change your device to whatever your device is. Here you can have all of your devices in one place, so if you have to rename a device, you can just go in here. And if you need to add a device or remove a device, you can just do it here instead of doing it in all of your automations. Broadcast all. So at the moment here, I'm picking up a message and I'm sending this message to a kitchen speaker. If I wanted to add more, so what I could do is, is I could call this TTS, Carl and Scorsese, and I just need to replace this with bedroom speaker, any other speaker. And now we have two speakers in the house playing back the same message. The first script I'm gonna show you today is alarm broadcast. In here, I'm using a repeat while. Repeat while is similar to the concept of a loop in programming. To repeat is a cool way to say to Home Assistant, keep doing the same action, but until some sort of thing happens. In this example, what I'm saying is, while my alarm panel is in triggered mode, then keep on repeating this message. And then the moment that the alarm panel is no longer in triggered mode or any other condition that you wanna put in, then this will stop. To actually get this done, you go to the action type, click repeat. You'll have various options like count, while, and until. I'm doing while, for example, here. So I'm saying while the state of the alarm panel is triggered, and I've also got an escape loop. So I've added a template repeat.index less than 50. What this means that this will only work only 50 times. And you don't really want the alarm going on for hours and hours and annoying your neighbors. And what I'm doing is I'm using my previous script that I showed you in the video, the broadcast all, and I'm passing on a message and the message could be anything you want. So all of our speakers will play the same message and they'll do it with a delay of 10 seconds. So, so at the end of one message, it's gonna delay, and then it goes again and it goes again until the conditions are met. The fourth script today is flashing lights. Now you could flash lights for a lot of reasons. Let's say you want to flash lights again in case of an emergency. So combined to the actual broadcast message, we also want to flash lights. We're using a similar concept, the same repeat and the same while with the alarm panel as triggered. What I'm doing specifically is I'm turning a switch on because I have a smart bulb tied to a switch, so I turn the switch on first, and then I turn on all of the uh, colored lights to red. So that will, will give us a nice emergency signal, brightness 255, and then after that, I toggle the light. So toggling the light will obviously turn it off, and then it will turn it back on again, and it will keep looping up until the while conditions are met, like before. Fifth must have script that you need in your home assistant is party mode. We all love to party, come on, right? You know, I know we haven't been having many parties last year, but this year, you know, we're gonna have many more. And I actually had a special occasion personally, we had a gender reveal party at my house, and that sort of sparked this script. I'm gonna show you how I created it. Because of the theme of the party, I'm actually going through blue, 
to pink and that's what I'm deciding to do but you can do this in any way you want. The smart thing that I used here is an input boolean. The input boolean is on then the script will keep on running. If I turn the input boolean off and I can do that through a physical button if I have an automation set up like that or I could do it from my mobile phone in home assistant and I can just turn off the boolean. Once I've turned off the boolean then the script will stop working. This actual script over here is pretty straightforward what it does is it just picks some lights and it just changes some RGB colors. To actually add RGB colors, this took me a little bit of, of a while to figure out how to do it. So top tip is to use these little dashes with the free RGB colors. So don't do something like 255 color comma 109 and that's not going to work. What you sort of need is, is some sort of format like this. I'm having the delay set at one minute so it's not sort of in your face and people don't notice it's flashing constantly, but you could change this to anything you wanted. Now as promised, we're gonna go into that deep dive and build that fading light script. Before we get on with it, take a second to smash that like button and let me know in the comment description down below which one is your favorite script and which one you're gonna be using immediately. Go to your scripts.yum. You can either use Visual Studio Code like I am or you can use File Editor. I always recommend Visual Studio Code because it's gonna be a lot easier. All right, so let's start. Now, you can obviously reference the code in the blog and you can just basically copy and paste it. But the purpose of this coding tutorial now is to actually show you how you can build it and how it actually works and how you go about building your own script without actually blindly looking at someone else's code. Let's just, let's just go through this and try to do this together. So pull up your editor and let's go. Now, first thing we need to do is give it a name. Okay, so you can call it Fade Lights that will be uh, fine. So you can see every single um, script that I have starts with the script name. If you have two words, then put an underscore and then just put colon and you can go and we can start. So it's giving us a, an issue. It's expecting an object, which is fine because we haven't actually completed it all. Now we can put an alias in and the alias is going to be a description. So we say fading light. Now it's immediately prompting us we're missing property sequence, which is fantastic. But first we're gonna specify a few variables. So I'm gonna create some fields. And these fields are what are we gonna actually pass the uh, script, so like the inputs of the script. So each field needs a, a name, so I'm calling this light, and it actually ex expects a description. Here we can put an example. Now this could be really useful and I'll show you the developer tools how we can pull the text from the example. So you know when you do fill example in developer tools and you call the script, then this is where this could come useful. I'm just gonna do something like this. So this is a name of a lamp that I always use in my tutorials. So I'm happy with this. Now look at the indentation. So you can see that description and example are properties of light and light is property of fields and alias and fields are property of fade lights. So you can see we're still missing the property sequence which we haven't done anything yet of that. So, so, so we'll get to that now. Now here's where people get confused. Where do you put sequence? Do you put sequence here? Do you put it here? Do you put it here? Now as you can see the error message is at line 423 of fade lights. So you really need to think of this needs to be a property of fade lights. Sequence isn't a property of the alias or fields. So if you put sequence in, you'll see incorrect type expected object, which is fine because we haven't filled it in yet. And if I try to indent this like this, you can see the error message coming up missing property. So we know we've indented it in the right position or we've got it like this. And within the sequence, I'm gonna actually declare a few variables. So I'm gonna do, in, I'm gonna do a double tap so we've got double space or a tab, dash variables, and here I'm gonna set some variables. I'm gonna do double tap again, light underscore entity. And in the light entity, I'm going to actually do something a bit cool with some templating. Here I'm saying light dot, so every light we know starts with a light dot, okay? So we have light dot, and then we need to read the input from the uh, field called light. And it's just slightly confusing, I know, but we got to get to it. So with Jenga, we open two curly brackets and then we just do light. Cool. So now this light will be populated, for example, with iMac lamp in example, but with any light that you pass to the script. So you can use one script to basically fade any light. 
This next step, we're going to be setting our input number to 255. So our input number is what we're using to help us store the brightness value. Now the input number is something that you're going to need to be creating before you're doing the script yourself. There could be other ways of doing this with our input numbers. Um, and let me know in the comment section down below if you've got a better script than what I'm building over here. Now here we're going to be using a service. The service that we're going to be using is input number. So input underscore number set value. And we need an entity ID, which is going to be our input number called brightness level. And now we need to pass some data to the value. So I'm going to do data and then again, I'm going to go and indent. So you can see it automatically does it for me. And the actual value, so how much or what we're we going to be sending the input number to is 255, which is maximum brightness, which is just what we're doing over here. So we are starting with our light at maximum brightness and then we're going to uh, fade it down to zero with the script. Now the next block of code is the repeat. So this could be something that we've seen in our other scripts, but we're just gonna go through it in more detail. Let's define the while. So the while is the condition that we're looking for. Then we go while dash condition. So I'm gonna be looking for a numeric state and I actually have some pre-filled it in for me, a little bit of a shortcut so I can clean it up. So the numeric state gives me entity ID, which is going to be the input number brightness level. So what I'm saying is, is that the level of the brightness has to be above zero. So a line above changes to zero, okay? So we have, so we're going to be repeating a sequence of action, which we haven't defined yet. And we're going to be repeating it while the numeric state of the brightness level, the property numeric state of the brightness level is above zero. Okay, so it will obviously work the first time because the first time is 255. Right? So we just set it 255, so this condition will always work um, at least in the first instance. Now, where are we putting sequence? It's the same question as before. Remember when we did it earlier. So sequence is a property of repeat. So as while is a property of repeat, sequence is a property of repeat. And Here's where we need to put sequence. And you can see the error message sort of went away. Now it's telling me that we're missing an object because we're not doing anything in our sequence. Okay, so we got service. I'm going to do light dot turn on. So here we are turning on the light um, because we're passing the uh, decreasing amount of brightness. So we can set a target. It's going to be our entity ID. Now because this is dynamic, we get the entity ID will be the light entity we defined earlier. So we can put that in the curly brackets. And we can do something like this. And we can put the quotes around it. Cool, so we've got our entity ID with light entity. Now we need to add the brightness. So data is gonna be a property of target. And under data, we have brightness. And over here, for example, if you put it, you would put like a value like 255, right? Some sort of hard-coded value. But I'm gonna show you how we can do something a little bit more dynamic. Okay, so here we, what we're saying is, is to use the state of the brightness level and convert that to an integer value. So at the beginning, it will be 255, okay? So we, the first point of the, of the sort of script will turn the light on to its maximum brightness, and then we're gonna start decreasing it. Before we decrease anything, we need add a, add a delay. So you can do something like this, a delay. And here you can set like hours, minutes, uh, as you wish. So I've second this to one second. So the it will f it basically will take 255 seconds to, to fade the light. You can set this as you wish. So we've got the delay. And at the end of the sequence, we need to uh, obviously reduce the amount of, you know, reduce the level of brightness in the input number. So the next time it runs, it will, it will pick it up. And we do that by doing input with service, and we're gonna call it input number decrement. Entity ID is gonna be the same. So it's gonna be input number brightness level 
the first time it runs, it's going to set it to 255. And then the second time, it's going to be 254, 253, and it's going to continue. Just give this a go and let me know if this works for you. And if you're struggling, please put a comment down in the description below, share your YAML. Now that I've saved it, I'm actually going to go and reload my scripts. Go to configuration, scroll down, server controls, check your configuration, reload scripts. If you go to developer tools, go to services, now search for scripts, find the fading lights, whatever name you've called it. You have this fill example data button. So this will give you an example uh, light, changes to a light that you have in your system, obviously. And now if I call the service, the light will come on and then it will gradually go down. So to demonstrate that actually, so you can see in the brightness right here, two, three, four, it's just going down every second. So we know that the script is working. Now I'm gonna give you some homework before the next video. Are you able to modify the script and change it to actually increment lights? So say example, a wake up script instead of a going to bed sleep. If you can actually get that done, let me know. Please share your code in the description down below. If you enjoyed this Home Assistant Pro Tip, then watch this other video over here. We're gonna find 12 more Home Assistant tips to become a pro. This is Gio, see you next time, ciao.